Hello there, this is Melissa Wokolo, and in this session we're going to be discussing on how to vet a shipper. The importance of ensuring that they have good credit, that they're in good standing, so that in the end you get paid for the services you provide as a freight broker. Let's get in. You should be able to see my Google Sheet. Yep, you see it now. Perfect. Wonderful. So on this Google Sheet, I'm going to say Ansonia Credit. If you go here to Ansonia Credit, um, you're going to log in. And I'm going to type a company name. So um, one of the companies that we were, um, let's do Winco. And I believe that they're out of Alabama. Okay, there you go. So Winco Foods. So let's pretend that this is a customer or a direct shipper that you're calling. So this is from a direct shipper standpoint. Um, I'm going to grab, oh, let me go back so I can see it because I'm going way too fast for you. Okay, I log in and I'm gonna type in the name of the company and I can type in the state. That way I don't have too much information. And then you can grab this and hit generate report. It costs $10, so I'm spending $10 today. Um, and you can see that their credit score is a 97. So they are, they are a low risk. That means they're in the green area, they're a low risk. Their average day to pay is 33 days. That's normal. Um, and then they have 57 reporting and they have over 8 million in a high balance. So because of that, you can comfortably, it says my company conservative and my company aggression. So you can conservatively um, lend them about 160,000 or up to 480,000 based on this information. So this would be your credit limit that you would give a customer. Running these reports, and this is the part I'm talking about, running these reports on a regular basis is super important because of the fact that companies can go up and down on average pay. What I do is I have a spreadsheet as well as my, my own TMS software um, will, will allow me to now put those average day of pay in there and I upload these. And I do do these on my major customers and anytime I haven't hauled in a while, like in the last month or two months or so, I will run another report. Yes, it costs $10, but $10 is a lot less than having problems, you know, down the road. So I will not be showing you the other example um, that I had um, because of the fact that I don't want to spend more money. <laughs> I'm a cheapskate, say. We are making profits, not spending money. Okay. All right. So let's go back to our slide. Good, good, good. Okay. So another company that you can check credit on is called TransCredit. Or you can check through your factoring company. Um, if your factoring company allows you to, and it's a non-recourse factoring company, which for those who know what a non-recourse and a recourse is, a recourse means that they will back charge you if the customer does not pay. A non-recourse means that, um, that you will not be back charged. So make sure you look over your contract and go, you can go through the factoring company. You can call accounts payable. Of, and this is the part that I want to slow down and just let you hear. Even if you've done all of these first three things, I want you to take a moment, no matter even if your factoring company gave you credit, that you're calling the accounts payable of the shipper. Before you even go and give that load up to the factoring company, because you're not exclusive use most likely, if your customer will pay you in three to five days, why would you give up money to your factoring company? So this is from a business standpoint, this is not from an agent standpoint. Um, if you're an agent, and you're a freight broker, your corporate office would be doing all of this. Um, just make sure your contract is, does state that you're not held liable in the event of any back charges. Um, in my agency in the past, um, I was held liable for all back charges. I didn't know that when I started, 
And these are questions, the hard questions that you need to be asking your agency. Um, because if they back charge you, then who's responsible? I was responsible for 60% because I had a 60, 40 split, meaning 60% went to me of the gross profit, 40% went to my agency. And, um, in the event that the customer did not pay, I was held responsible for 60% of what the customer did not pay. Okay. So be sure that you're asking those questions because if that's true and they give you credit, you know, they're the one lending the credit. They're the one saying whether or not that credit is good. So why would the contract state that? All right. So make sure you're covering yourself for that regard because it should be a non-recourse agency agreement.